Hi everyone and welcome to the Pro User Interviews. My name is Kevin and I'm leading the charge on looking a little bit more at what the pro and premium users of New Zenda are doing with their sites. Now, as we know, Zenda is growing at a rate of knots and the possibilities within the platform itself are almost endless now. So we're going to delve into a number of people's sites that have been using it for a little while. They've got some courses up. Um, they come from a whole range of backgrounds. Um, and we're going to find out how it's working out for them and maybe give you a little bit of inspiration. So today, I'm really, really pleased to be able to say we have Steve Preston with us. So hi, Steve. Hi, Kevin. Thanks for inviting me. You're very, very welcome and glad to have you here. So, Steve, for people that are unaware of who you are or what you do, can you just give us a little bit of an introduction as to who you are, what your site is and what you teach? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I'm Steve Preston. I'm known as the Career Catalyst, which uh, I have trademarked. Uh, basically, I'm a leading career coach, internationally acclaimed author, speaker and creator of Breakthrough Career and Personal Development Products of which I have two courses um, on New Zenla. One is uh, Winning Through Career Change, Six uh, Steps to Fulfillment in Your Work and Life. And the other one is uh, Winning Through Redundancy and Layoffs. So how did you get to become a career coach? Oh, my word. That's a... <laughs> <laughs> how long we got? Uh, well, the short story is um, I went through my own uh, redundancy and transition uh, 20 years ago now, unbelievably. My company uh, relocated to a different part of the UK. And uh, uh, basically, I took a career defined decision not to go with them. And um, uh, then went into a, um, a voyage of self-discovery into the unknown for the best part of a year. Um, I really wasn't sure what I was going to do. I, I ended up on a government-funded course for unemployed professionals and executives and basically fell in love with career and personal development. And, um, I mean, it's a great story because at the end of the course, I just fed back to the... Um, the managing director of the company who was running it and um, uh, much to my surprise they took on board all my constructive feedback and one thing led to another before I knew it uh, I'd helped them rewrite the whole course I became uh, uh, one of their trainers and career coaches and within a matter of months I became uh, their lead trainer and career coach and was mentoring others to do the same and I'd set up my business alongside that as well. Um, and so I let that go eventually and just focused on uh, my own company. And uh, ultimately, when I became a published author, my, my career uh, catalyst brand in my own right, Steve Preston, the career catalyst. And yeah, I mean, I decided that um, I wanted to repurpose my my three books into online programs and that was a, a business goal uh, for 2020 but little did we know what was going to happen um, and so I changed the order I was going to start with the portfolio careers book which is my last book but with everyone uh, you know jobs being at risk and people being laid off uh, you know all over the world I thought I'd start with winning through redundancy instead um, so that was my first course onto New Zenla, but I, I'm not a technical person. So I went through all the pains of, uh, I literally did months and months of research. Uh, I tried out Thinkific, um, uh, Podia, um, I think there was something else I tried, and I, and I researched all these other learning management systems, but I just didn't get on with any of them um and i found new zenla by accident rather than design i can't even remember how it happened but as soon as i started playing around with it i thought well hang on a minute this actually looks pretty intuitive um and and it sort of went from there awesome so 
going back into your courses, so you've got three books. The goal is to get three courses out at the moment, the, the initial yeah. goal, and that might, of course, lead on to other things um, for the future. Do you, When you're creating these courses, you're transforming them from book format into a course. How are you delivering those? Because when we deal with only the written word, it, it's very different to what we have available within New Zealand, for example. Um, so what type of format? Are you using a set format to deliver those? And how are you doing that? Yeah, it's a great question, Kevin, because um, I can't say it was easy. It was a real challenge. Um, but essentially what I, what I did was I took each chapter and each chapter then became a module of the course. And then each module was then broken down, obviously, into different lessons, which were key sections of each chapter. So I, I, that was the approach I took. But as you say, it's very different when the written word as opposed to um, having videos um, and audio content. But what I did, um, uh, there's a lot of audio content, which is mostly um, case studies from the books. And those case studies, basically, I'm just reading through what was written in the book because they're written in a way that that's easy to do. Um, obviously, the videos, I had to put a, a you know slightly different take on it to draw the person, person in. Um, and I road tested it. I got a number of people to, to try it out, especially the first course who when you threw redundancy, when so many people were being laid off at that time. Um, I, I road tested on a couple of people in the UK and the US who I came into contact through LinkedIn, who were clearly in a difficult position. And I thought, well, if I can help somebody else uh, in, in the process and they can help me to see whether it actually works in the right way, like you're saying, does the book actually work as a... Um, a, 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 a engaging course and I know I've cracked it um, and unbeknown to me two of those people one in the US and one in the UK had actually already bought my Winnie Through Redundancy book uh, but they hadn't read it yet right. so it was a really good test um, and they both said yeah it, it worked but they gave me some feedback as well as little just little nuances who are how I could um, tweak it um, but, uh, yeah, so in the main, I was trying to recreate the tone of, of the book because, or my books, because a lot of people say my books are almost like I'm talking to them in their, in their lounge at home over a cup of coffee uh, anyway. So, um, but I had, I hadn't done loads of video stuff before. So this is, this was a, you know, pretty challenging for me. Perfect. So. Um, and this is something that's really, I always find really fascinating because when we do the Launch Your First course boot camp and we take brand new people through into courses, we always talk about getting testers in. Uh, always before you do any form of real launch and stuff, it's a common theme that runs through course creators or should be um, because it's a new platform. You don't quite know how it's going to work for the most important people out there, which is the people buying your courses. Um and you need to feel confident to sell something, but you can only feel confident if you've had people actually try it out. Yeah. Um, and it's really interesting. So I know a lot of authors that are attempting to do what you've done. Um, and again, found it a real struggle um, because it's not their natural world. A lot of as very similar to yourself. They're public speakers. Um, they're used to getting up on stage. They can do that. It's comfortable. They'll sit there and they'll write a book. They have their, their proofreaders, etc. Their publishing house goes through it. They're comfortable. As soon as you say to them, look, let's make this information into a course, it becomes uncomfortable because yeah. it's unfamiliar territory. And well, like, especially we, when you're talking to a camera and there's no one there. Yeah, absolutely. Because of course, public speakers do like to bounce off of the audience. Yeah. Um, you know, and if they're all sitting there on their phones, you know, you've got to up it a gear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I completely get it. But I find it really interesting that um, you said 
right towards the beginning that the technical side of it was slightly challenging, but you've still got two courses out. Um, so either the determination to succeed was stronger than the opposition to the tech, or the tech actually made it a bit easier for you. Um, well, as I mentioned, I, I tried out other uh, learning management systems and, and just didn't get on with them. Hmm. Um, but I don't know. As soon as I went on to New Zendler and um, I started playing around, because that's basically what you do. I mean, the, the course that you have now for new, for new um, course creators wasn't there. No. Um, so I did have the benefit of um, uh, the affiliate who signed me up. He had his own course and that was really good. But even so, most of what I did was, was, was trial and error, but, everything seemed to be logical. Right. Um, and I didn't find that with any other learning management system I, I tried. Yes, you know, it's frustrating because you do this over here and something goes weird and you think, oh, what, what the hell? But um, I, I chose to, to, rather than outsourcing the job to somebody else, and I did have an online course years ago, uh, which I outsourced to a contact of mine who was a specialist in the field. I wanted to do it all myself. I wanted to learn it, live it, breathe it, eat it, everything. Um, and I'm so pleased I did because, um, you know, I wouldn't say I'm an expert, far from it, but I know enough of what I need to do so that if I do hit problems, um, I can sort of work it through. And if, if I can't get the answer, then... I go on the Facebook group, which is brilliant, mm -hmm. uh, and there's always people respond uh, to, to questions on there. Or if it is a, a real technical issue, then obviously I go to support. Yeah. But the technical issues have been few and far between. It's mostly been um, help. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to do X, Y, Z. You know, um, what, what do I do? Yeah, of course. So let's just move on a little bit on so we talked about keeping the students or the people that you're connecting with engaged so you said you know you've had a couple of people that have bought the book not read it but went through your course um on a stage we can keep them engaged because if they're falling asleep we can go and wake them up um but through a course what what was your strategy to make sure they went actually went through the course because that's one of our major goals as course creators. We don't want to sell something people don't use. Yeah. Um, I've, I've personally would feel disappointed with that. So I work really hard to try and keep the students engaged. Um, so they finish it because um, then they'll get whatever the result is that's the aim of the course. Yeah. Um, so what's your strategy with that? Did you give that any thought and what do you do? Yeah, no, absolutely, Kevin. I mean, initially, I, I, I drip fed the first course, I drip fed it. So they had to, uh, I mean, set up so they have to go through everything sequentially anyway, they can't miss anything out. Yeah. And the nature of my process is that they work through lends itself to that. Um, but uh, what I found very early on was the first people who, who who's actually um, uh, paid to, to for the course they were working at different paces even though I'd set up a group cohort um, so I thought well no what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow people the freedom to move on once they've uh, so the the first um, uh, the introduction bit basically was set up and they couldn't move past that until a certain date but after that they could go at their own pace and in fact um after that first group cohort i just opened it up completely because i uh, i found that was actually going to be easier um and it's very evident that everyone does work at different pace but also the now you got the you didn't it wasn't there when i first set up my courses but the ability to have discussion with the um, uh, course creator um, on certain lessons that was added in and, and that that is absolutely brilliant um, so it's wonderful to see people who might say 
oh, as a result of doing this particular lesson, I've had some real light bulb moments and I just want to share this and thanks, Stephen, blah, blah, blah. So I could then comment on that and it, it motivates and encourages other people as well. And obviously the other people on the course at the time could see that as well. Um, uh, so the community aspect um, of the course, I, th I think is actually, um, uh, I think it's very important. Uh, um, more obviously, more so if you, you know, where you've got a group cohort, if you haven't got a group cohort and people are just doing it individually, it doesn't really matter, but they can still use that discussion aspect with the lessons to engage with yourself. And I think people are more inclined to do that than to send an email and say, hey, Steve, I've just done this bit of the course and really enjoy that because uh, they're doing it while they're actually live into the course. Yeah, it's a bit less formal, isn't it? Yeah. You send yeah. an email, it feels very official. Yeah. Uh, if you have a chat function in there somewhere, then, you know, it feels a bit more relaxed. Yeah. A bit like the Facebook groups. Uh, but you're right, the community side of courses really does help inspire people along. Mm. And even all of the boot camps I've run for New Zenla, even though they might start on a Monday and finish on a Friday with five days, there's still people working through it the following week and the following yeah, week. Cool. Um, and the other, the other thing I, on my course is, is I've got a lot of interactive um, activities or exercises, okay. whatever you want to call them. Um, now, I know... I, as the admin and the course creator, I can't see what they've done on all of those. I can only see if there's a survey or a quiz, I can see the responses to that. Um, but certainly the other things, obviously, if they're set up as um, uh, Word documents, I can't actually see the content. Um, but, um, you know, you know whether you've, they've actually gone through that process. Uh, so I have a lot of... Um, interactive stuff that they need to work through and I, 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 to me that's important for the sort of um you know work i'm involved in and you yeah. want people to dig deep as well on on this sort of um, you know it is a voyage of self-discovery when they're going through a career transition process whether it's as a result of redundancy of their own choice yeah and of course with the assignments now we sort of have a little bit more control so people can upload their Word documents or do a video of themselves and get yeah. that submitted. So, um, you know, it's forever improving as to what's yes. available. But, of course, we can't keep rewriting our courses because a new feature comes <laughs> That's insane. Um, we'd forever be rewriting them. But, uh, you know, as, a, as an idea, obviously, as it's a developing platform, you know, going back once a year and saying, actually – what can I update? What needs updating? Is there a new feature um, that I'd like to include to make this course better um, is always good. Um, I run a 30 day blogging challenge and every year we update that because there are small changes in the SEO world that ne need updating. Um, yeah. You know, no, so I mean, that's, that's a great point, Kevin. In fact, I've already done that um, as a result of uh, some of the new enhancements to New Zenla. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was when I was doing my second course and I'm thinking, well, hang on a minute, if I'm bringing them into the second course, I might as well update them on to the first course. So I had to keep switching between the two to make sure I did it. Uh, and the other thing I did, which I, I, I haven't mentioned, Kevin, but, um, and I didn't know you could do it at, at the time, but the, a lot of people who went through the winning through redundancy course initially said well this course really lends itself to employers um, funding such a course for the employees they're laying off um, you know to help them reevaluate their careers and lives and so on um, as uh, you know a, a part of what we called an outplacement program uh, and I was thinking well what's the best way to do that and then I was told well you can clone the course so you could have the same course, but the branding on the other course is my company branding as opposed to my personal branding. So I've got the exact same course set up um, for employers um, to buy that course to um, support their staff they're laying off. 
Fantastic. Cool. Okay. Right. So um, I think now's the time where we're going to unveil your site. And so, because we want to have a look and, you know, I remind everybody watching this, Zender is built with people that create courses. They've got an expertise outside of web design. We are not here for web designers specifically. Um, if you are one and you want to get involved, by all means do. But the purpose and the way Zendler was built was for anybody that wants to sell a course can use this platform. Um, and there's certain things that are put in place when you create your first course, there's pages and all of that done. So it's really important to remember that. And when Steve's going to show us his site that he's built now, and as he said, he didn't want to get a freelancer involved. He's not a web developer, um, but it's an effective site and it works. So we're going to have a, a quick whistle-stop tour of Steve's site. And of course, after the at the end of the video that we're doing here right now, the interview, there will be a link to Steve's site underneath, so you can go off and have a look at that. So, Steve, if you want to share your screen for us, and let's if you can walk us through what you've got, that would be brilliant. Right. So um, what you're seeing here is my, my first course, Winning Through Redundancy and uh, Layoffs, Six Steps to Navigate Your Way to a Brighter Future. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know whether this is the right or wrong, the best way to do it, but I thought start with a video just to uh, uh, explain, you know, who this is for and what it's all about um, and make the point that it's repurposed from my... Um, book here um and who the um how to course to benefit people a bit about me who it's for and this is something i was told is very important and who it's not for um because there is very definite categories of people it's not for um and then the, the, the breakdown of the course into the, the different um, uh, modules and, oh, I'm on editing mode here, aren't I? Let's go into it. And then um, the, the specific um, uh, lessons underneath. Um, so I haven't done anything fancy with this. I've used all the standard dynamic um, blocks and so on. Uh, I've got testimonials from people who road tested it. And now I've even got a montage now, people who've been through the course since um, and uh, explain it. Um, now, this is something I struggled a lot with, the actual payment. Um, the look and feel of the payments, but I've, I've gone for the sort of three tier type approach. Um, and uh, a, a, a group course every so often, but also that was an initial change. I was just going to run like quarterly group cohorts. And then again, feedback was, well, no, the course lends itself beautifully that people just buy it and get on with it. And then they could engage in one-to-one -one support with you as and when they need it, which is, I think, probably the way it's going to pretty much go now anyway. Um, and payment options if people want to pay in two installments. FAQ. Um, there's no course currently there. Um, so, it, you know, it, it's... Um, the general view, Kevin, is it does what it says on the tin. Um, you're, you're obviously way more knowledgeable about me, this stuff than me, whether that looks good or not. Um, but, um, uh, as it stands at the moment, I, I'm happy with that. And I say I've cloned this version, uh, for employers as well, uh, who can, um, uh, <coughs> have different options to use it to support their, their staff. Uh, do you want to see the other one? Yeah, you can do. I mean, I, I think that sales page looks great. Um, okay. You know, when we create these in New Zealand, so you click on, you go off and you create a new course and it will create you a sales page layout. And it always starts the same with the video or image space at the top. 
Um, it adds in the the uh, creator bio in there. It adds in the curriculum bit, and it adds the testimonial and the payment bit. Um, but there's so much you cannot because you can just add bits in, yeah. and you know. Is it the right format? Who knows? You know, there's a thousand and one different formats you can have on a sales page. Uh, the real question is, does it bring you in sales uh, or leads coming in? If it does, it's working. You don't need to do too much. If you get lots of people come along and they're not buying, then you might need to adjust some little bits on it. But you've got a lot of the right elements in there for sure. Um, you know, uh, uh, and it looks good. So, right. You know, I wouldn't worry about it too much at all. I think it looks it looks good. Any page you ever get with anybody will always say you could improve on that. Yeah, um, I mean one of <laughs> one of one of the things that I learned, uh, and I think is particularly important, uh, and I'm sure you share this, Kevin, is uh, is to check on mobile view um, because it can look very different. You know, your your working away uh, well i am on my, on on my pc and you think yeah this this all looks good like it's across the page <laughs> and then of course you look at it on the mobile and it's all running uh down the page uh, you know like with these for instance the image is going to be in a completely different place yeah. um and i wasn't aware of that initially so I'm always checking now as I'm creating stuff just to make sure it, it looks looks right. Uh, and I suppose the majority of people will, will uh, initially um, come across a course on, on a mobile device anyway. Yeah, a lot of the time, Zendler automatically resizes it. So, for example, when you upload a video into New Zendler, it takes a little while to do it because it's uploading it into 16 different formats the one video and this all happens behind the scenes you don't know it's happening so what that does is it makes that video responsive for different devices uh, now mobile is and always will be the biggest issue that any website anything online has because there are so many different screen sizes resolutions uh, capabilities it's impossible to create one picture and it does every single one of them it's just absolutely impossible so even with the best intent in the world, we can do. We can only on mobile have the best that we can have. Yeah. Um, you know, and most of the time, it works quite well. You always get the one that says, "I can't see this image. It's off to the side or something." And then you find out they're using an iPhone one or something. Um, <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> so, but it does work well, and it's a good point made that you know we do have four options with the screen resolution so we have all sizes where whatever you do it will automatically translate then we have the mobile the desktop and uh, the tablet which you can flick about between um so if you're worried about that and you're right a lot of people will come in via a mobile device of some description um you know because that even looking around the internet people searching way over 50 percent of people are on mobile devices yeah yeah you know so and, we and have I, to think about it that's right and sometimes i realize that the the headings might have been way way too big on mobile so, so do you want to show us your other course uh yeah just uh, quickly um yeah uh it's i just copied the same format so i yep. thought well right why reinvent the wheel um, so this is uh, winning through career change. So this is for people who choose to change career rather than having the rug fall from underneath them. Um, again, very similar format, um, do's and don'ts. And again, um, same sort of thing here. And uh, I didn't mention, but you saw it before, I, I have set up free previews uh for the first lesson on each module um so that people can can uh look at that and think well maybe that's that looks good to me i'll give this a go mm -hmm. um and again i've got a montage there um pricing options faq and then a bit about me um and you know, some of these um, 
testimonies are the same because people were talking about it from a different aspect of career change. So absolutely fine. It works for both courses, really. Um, and there's some new ones on the on the video as well. Um, that yeah. looks really good. Looks really good. Thank so you. it gives people an idea of, you know, that is a good format for a sales page. Um, Can I just make one point, Kevin, which uh, I think is important. Um, as a result of uh, feedback, well, I only had a, you know, there was only a very limited amount of negative feedback on the Winning Through Redundancy course about some of the audio content. Um, but I invested in a new mic, and I've now got a Shure 51, I think it is, um, so the quality now of the audio is is much more consistent than it was uh, on on the first course, and that again is one of the enhancements I made because I did go back to some of the previous um, videos uh, where um, the audio was a little bit iffy on it, um, and used the new one or a, a particular audio clip. I redid it because um, uh, there. I, I'd again, everyone's got a different take on it, but but I've been told by various people that it's often the audio quality that uh, annoys people more than actually the video quality. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. And people are very forgiving if a video isn't quite spot on, but if you've got an annoying audio, um, <laughs> they switch off pretty lively. Um, you know, and remember that a lot of, if it's not actually something you've got to watch somebody doing, but it's um, advice or it's a, a, a verbal training they can just watch, they don't listen to, then they don't actually need to watch the video. They'll have it playing whilst they're doing something else. Yeah. Um, or they might, you know, listen to it in the car or something as they're driving, for example. Um, but if that video audio quality is really bad, they'll just switch it off. Um, yeah. You know, so you're right. But, you know, when you start with your courses, you've got to start with what you've got. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, there, this system always lends itself to improving if you wish to. Yeah. Um, no, you know, and that. one of the biggest stumbling blocks new course creators have is they want everything perfect Just before so. they put it out. And it yeah. really no, doesn't have to be that way. Yeah, I, I, that was my biggest failing, Kevin, without a doubt. And, and my next course, I'm planning to, to run as a live course. So that's going to be a, oh, brilliant. a, a big challenge because um, it's been suggested to me that I should do that. Um, so that will bring about other challenges. <laughs> Fantastic. Do you want to stop sharing your screen for a second? Yeah, sure. And um, so we've had a look at your site. Uh, before we just wrap up, let's, um, let me ask you one final question. Uh, so as somebody that had the material, wanted to do a course, probably doesn't overly define themselves as a professional course creator right now. Um, certainly with the learning management system that you've gone through, what what would your advice be to people that were in a similar position, sitting there thinking, I've got this knowledge, I want to package it somehow and sell it? What would your piece of advice be for them? Yeah. Big question that Kevin. Um, I I think well I've had I've actually had this conversation with somebody recently, and um, they were in a very similar situation, and they decided they were going to outsource all the work to a, a freelancer to do it all for them. Um, uh, it's got to be a personal choice. It's not just about the cost. It's about understanding the system getting the best out of it and um i i think that's one of the key decisions you have to make early on am i going to outsource the work to somebody else or am i going to learn how to do this myself and if you're going to learn how to do it yourself you have to accept it's going to take time and you've got to schedule in that time it's like writing a book you know you have to schedule in uh time to learn the stuff and then um, but you can learn as you go. I think with the resources New Zealand now provides, the, the course and, uh, the, you know, course creator course and so on, 
is absolutely fantastic. So there is so much um, training and support and help available, which wasn't there when I started, um, that, you know, if you get stuck, stop and then check out, is there something there that I can watch and or listen to and, and work out how to do it? And if you are then still stuck, go on to the Facebook group, ask the question. If it's a technical question, always go to uh, New Zealand the support. Um, but you have to you have to be prepared um, uh, to put in a lot of effort, a lot of um, a lot of work. You know, you, you, you reap what you sow. And there is no magic wand. There's no holy grail, is there? You you've got to put in the effort to get um, the the return. And yes, you absolutely spot on, Kevin. The biggest mistake most course creators make is they want it perfect. And I wanted it perfect. So I kept doing stuff over again. Another video, another video, another video. I think, oh, for goodness sake. Um, I suppose know when good is good enough. Perfect. So on that note, I'm going to leave everybody with that <laughs> uh, to digest that because that's really great advice and exactly how I feel about this as well. So, Steve, thank you so much um, for your time today and showing us around your site. Uh, for people watching this, there will be a link to Steve's site underneath the video. Um, so please do go and have a look. If it's something that you're interested in, then reach out to Steve. I'm sure he's up for a conversation around that type of thing. Um, uh, and enjoy finding out a little bit more about how Steve's been using the New Zealand system. So look out for our next pro user interview. But for now, uh, thanks very much, Steve, for your time. Massively appreciated. And I will see you all in the New Zealand community. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Kevin.